Last summer, we went to Port Gavern in North Cornwall to meet entomologist Chris Hayes. I'm looking for one of the most extraordinary insects to be found down in the southwest of England here. Um, what I'm actually looking for is feed. Ah, here's some feeding, little notches in the leaves. But this insect itself has been in this country for the best part of the century, originally comes from New Zealand. But when you first see one, you really can't believe what you're looking at. Now, here we are. I think, yes, you see there's feeding damage in the leaf, and there is one. Now, it's a stick insect. These New Zealand stick insects have done well in Britain, um, mainly because the climate in the extreme southwest of England really is similar to that of parts of New Zealand where they come from. Food plants have come with them. Many New Zealand plants have become established here, you see. But in addition to that, these New Zealand species have readily adapted to various conifers and members of the rose family, roses and brambles and things. So the food is here all right. Well, basically, there are three different types. Uh, two of them are widely distributed in Devon and Cornwall. Uh, there's an extra one in, in, the, um, in the Scilly Islands, and there's also a new one recently recognised in the south of Cornwall. Uh, the three that are established on the mainland of Devon and Cornwall, one of them is almost without prickles, it's got little bumps here and there, and the other two are quite prickly. And by prickly, I mean they're prickly like a bramble stem. Normally, in a normal insect or normal animal of any sort, um, the male genes and the female genes are mixed at mating. Uh, they split halfway, and the product have half male and half female characteristics. And then the resulting offspring, you see, are features of both. But with these stick insects, the male factor has been lost altogether. So what is most interesting is that eggs are produced totally without a, a genetical mix at all. Of course, it's a very economical way of living. No, no psychological worries about looking for mates, no spending to try and find the right one, no flashing it about or anything like that. I mean, they, they live a very simple, nun-like existence, if I hope I'm not hurting feelings by saying that. They simply exist and the, the eggs come to them, as it were. The first person to notice these harmless insects in Port Gavern was naturalist Malcolm Lee. He spotted a colony munching rose bushes in the garden, and he's now conducting a survey to find the exact location of all the wild stick insects in the southwest. They first arrived in about 1908 on the Isles of Scilly, and the owner of the garden on Tresco, he imported a large number of tree ferns and various other New Zealand plants, and he split the consignment and sent half of the trees to Paynton and they were first recorded in Paynton the following year. So it's been almost 100 years now that they've uh, arrived here. They arrived here probably as eggs, maybe as insects, but I think eggs are far more likely. We've got two main colour forms here in, uh, in this area. There's this brown one here, but we also have a nice green form, lovely apple green form. The green ones are almost invariably this same colour green, but the brown ones, interestingly enough, can, uh, can actually change colour. They can actually go from a pale straw colour to a really rich red mahogany. Now, that's very interesting because it's never been recorded in New Zealand before. And that ability to change colour makes our stick insects in the West Country unique in the whole world. Now, I'm going to see which form, the green or the brown one, moves the fastest. And um, the first to get to the outer ring is the winner. that shows that stick insects don't move a lot. Their main strategy, of course, is camouflage. And in fact, if they were very active, they would probably get eaten by something almost immediately. 
If uh, any person has seen any stick insects in their garden, I'd be delighted to hear from them because it would be nice to this year to set down as much information as we know, perhaps with a view maybe in 50 years' time, somebody could perhaps repeat the survey and see just how far they've spread. They've certainly spread quite away in the last 100 years and perhaps in the next 100 they'll be spreading even more, maybe over the whole of England. Chris Hayes and Malcolm Lee and New Zealand's exotic stick insects now very much at home in Cornwall. And if you want to get in touch with Malcolm, you can do so at the Cornwall Wildlife Trust.